guys, it's Liv and welcome back to my channel. So in today's video, I'm basically going to be answering your guys' questions about university, all things university basically. We have stuff about budgeting to like moving in day, everything like that. These are all your questions I've asked for over on Instagram. If you're not following me over there, follow me now. It's at Liv Sylvie, why would you not? Because then you can't join in my videos. So yeah, I've asked for your guys' questions. I'm gonna answer them. Try to put in as much detail as I can because I know how stressful it must be going into first year without being at school to ask your teachers stuff and also not being able to visit the universities. I feel for you guys going into first year. Before we get started, don't forget to hit the thumbs up button if you enjoy. Also subscribe because I do make quite a lot of uni content. So if you are worried about first year or anything, I'm a girl to come to. Also feel free to go over to my Instagram and drop me a DM with any university questions you have because I get quite a few of them and I'm always happy to help you guys out. So without further ado, let's just get straight into the first question. So I just have all the questions here on my handy dandy iPad generation two. We know we're old school here. Anyway, so the first question is, how do you food shop? Do you fully pre-plan or improvise? So I really, really recommend pre-planning because for so long I didn't do that and I wasted so much money by just improvising. Obviously when you're going around, feel free to like look at things and be like, oh, I forgot about that. Maybe I should have that for dinner too. But it just really helps out knowing what meals you're gonna have for that week and stuff. Like I write down the meal and then know each ingredient that is on it. And then you don't miss anything and you also don't get too much that you don't need. So yeah, I really recommend pre-planning. Good question. So the next question I'm really, really praying won't be a problem by September. But that question is, is how to meet people and feel comfortable during COVID. So yeah, I hope this isn't an issue by September. But if it is, I know that university is actually doing really, really fun, like socially distance events. Like I know quite a few people in first year this year during Corona and they've literally loved going to them. So make sure you actually do look out for all of like your student union parties and stuff because even though you might be at a table, apparently they're pretty fun. So I recommend doing that to make some friends. And then I've said this before in my university video on how to make friends during Corona and everything, but use your seminars and breakout rooms to your advantage. You can so easily ask people's Instagrams and Snapchats and stuff and they'll happily give it to you. You can even make a group chat with everyone on your course and make friends through that. And of course you're not allowed to actually like go into people's houses and stuff, but you can so easily go on a socially distanced walk with them and stuff. So definitely use breakout rooms. You hate them, but great love them. So the next question, I can't really give you a proper answer, but it is, is it worth starting university in September with all the corona going on? So I couldn't say for definite, as I said, but hopefully by September, things will just start to settle down a bit. I might look back on this and laugh at myself, but hopefully everyone will have like the vaccine and stuff then. So I reckon it is a good idea to go in September. You know, you can't put it off forever and loads of people are going to be trying to apply after all of this is done. So I reckon do go in September. As I've said before, first year, still have had so much fun during this corona whole pandemic thing so yeah i do recommend still going because either way you're gonna have a fun time sadly can't tell you that corona is gonna be over in like april the 22nd corona is gonna be over imagine it is sorry and then the next question i'm just gonna answer briefly because i've made a whole youtube video on this which you can watch I will try and link it here if I figure out how to do that. So it is, what should I bring to university? Now, if you mean it in the way of like, what should I bring to like the kitchen and stuff, my university, Manchester Metropolitan, provided a microwave, kettle, ovens, fridges, obviously they're not expecting to bring that. That's what mine bought, obviously, you might not get a microwave and kettle, but I presume they all do. And then with all of like your room stuff and everything university, make sure to watch that video because I go into depth, I'm not gonna lie. And if I was moving into university I'd want to watch that video so that is that video I put it before and then the next question I'm going to answer as best as I can from what I remember because I literally haven't been in university in a month and a half maybe two months so that's far enough but it is how much a week do you spend so this really depends on what you're like, how much you drink, how much you eat, all of that kind of stuff. But drink could range from £10 a week to £30, depending on how much you drink. And obviously if you're going clubbing, you'll need a bit more money for buying drinks, but this is why you should pre-drink well. But I really recommend just getting the cheap off-brand as Doral Cull or something, because I wasted a lot of money on getting Gordon's pink gin in first year. Why did I do that? Olivia, go to Aldi and get the Aldi pink gin, tastes the exact same. So yeah, alcohol depends how much really. I'm probably like 10 pounds a week. I personally get these massive scary bottles of vodka from Asda, which scares everyone in my house. <laughs> 
Um, but it saves me a lot of money because it lasts a good few nights of drinking. So I recommend doing that, but that would probably equate to like five pounds a week, maybe. It just, it's just depending how much you drink it, okay? And then for food, obviously it depends how much you eat, but you have to do your food shop at a big like supermarket. Do not go to this strategically placed co-op. Sorry, it's a difficult word. Got out at the end though. That will break the bank basically. And then I probably spend 30 to 50 pounds every two weeks on food. I walk to the Aldi, which is so cheap. Like Aldi's one of those places that you do your shopping and then you're like guessing how much it is. It's always lower. The next one's a funny one because too much is simply the answer. Um, that is how much is it to use the washing machines and dryers? Well, I actually fully can't remember because I avoided using them at like an unhealthy cost, basically. But I think it was four pounds for a wash, four pounds, one wash, and three pounds for a dry. So what I did is I hardly ever used the dryer. Maybe get a clothes horse and dry it on there because you don't want to be spending three pounds every time on a dry. Washing machines are expensive at every university. It's expensive. And then next up it is what are some budget tips? Now, in first year, I needed some budget tips, so I might do a whole video on budget tips. If you guys are interested in that, let me know. But the main thing is do not go to the co-op, as I said, because I think on every university campus they put a co-op, because a block of cheese is like five pounds, and they know that a student will buy the five pound cheese. So don't do that. Go to the big supermarket, or the cheapest one near you, and do a shop then. If you can get to an Aldi or Lidl, go there because even Asda is more expensive than Aldi and Lidl. They're like bottom tier, but top tier food. So that's my tip. And then try as much as you can to get like the cheap supermarket own foods and alcohol, alcohol especially, because if you go on brand, that would be so much more expensive. Might be a flex, but you don't need the grey ghost, babe. You don't, okay? Just don't do it. And also don't forget to budget things in like your phone bill and traveling home, because traveling home for me was like 70 pounds. So I tried to like factor that into why, how much I could spend every week and stuff but i'd recommend obviously kind of planning your budget before but you won't really know until you actually get to university and you do your first shop and you're like okay that's how much that will cost that's how much i'm drinking you know you know what i mean so the next question i've also done a <laughs> sorry about that can you tell i've had too much coffee okay i just need to stop okay basically the next question i've already done a video on i'll put it here hopefully if it works and that is what to do on moving in day now moving in day is a stressful time but what i'm going to tell you in short because watch that video so i recommend being as social as you can whether you have a few drinks with your housemates or you don't just try to be a bit social mainly be yourself don't be somebody else when you move to university just be you otherwise you'll soon lose those traits and become yourself again i won't be like um who was that i met on the first day just chill with your housemates because everyone's nervous so yeah watch my full video on that because i know how much anxiety there is around moving day the next question is quite a big one that nobody really knows the answer to and i can give you a part answer and that is what to do with freshers wristbands and also some tips on pre's so i would wait until you know what your housemates are doing about wristbands before you get them because you don't want a wristband and your housemates not to and then be like Okay, I've just wasted so much money. So wait till you get there maybe and sort it out. Nobody in my house ended up getting a band. We still went to loads of events that you don't need the band for. There's literally freshers events everywhere. So you don't need the wristband. And then with pre's, well, you're gonna wanna pre well, but not too well. You gotta be careful there. I know the feeling of not wanting to buy drinks when you're out and being able to actually drink or you can before you leave. But be careful with it. I drank a bit too much at Breeze quite a few times and it's a very dangerous place to be. And you don't want to have your housemates carrying you home, okay? Been there, done that, don't do it, it's not worth it. Obviously preying does save you a lot of money. It depends how you do it. You do end up losing money sometimes because you have to go home early. So pre well, but not too well. I now tend to like pour an amount into a different bottle, leave that downstairs, put the other one in my room, lock my room, put my key somewhere else. So I didn't go back upstairs and get more alcohol. That's what it got to, that's how bad I was getting. So make sure to not drink too much. And then the next question is, what is meeting your housemates like? Will everyone get along? And that is a very good question. So I think in every uni house, there's always the one person that's a bit timid and shy. And all I can say is at least try to get them to join in and stuff. But if they don't want to, respect that. Do not force them to come and drink with you guys because that might not be their kind of thing. Not everybody goes to university to get drunk and party. So respect their decision, but also make them feel welcome and part of the group. And then with the house getting along, everybody probably won't get along. That's just part of life, isn't it? You won't move into a house with eight people and love every single one of them. A lot of people do, 
a lot of people do and my house was pretty good for it to be fair but there will always always be one person in your house that you get along well with and that is all you need sometimes so don't overthink people not getting along because it's bound to happen with like the stress of like messiness and stuff but it's just part of uni life to be honest okay and then the next question is is it easy to balance social life and the fees of everything now yes and no basically i did end up on my overdraft but don't stress about it honestly in first year you mess up your money that is what you're supposed to do so it's not what you're supposed to do and avoid it if you can but don't stress if you do if you organize your money well enough and don't go too over budget each week you'll be so fine and i know some people that get their parents like transfer a certain amount of their loan over each week and that really stops them from going over budget and i really recommend doing that if you are struggling to like balance between food and alcohol basically and then the next question i think is different between every university in fact i'm pretty sure it is because all term times are different but that is what is the time between moving into university and actually starting university now from what i remember my freshers week i had seminars rude okay was hung over every time i went in so some of them might be that so i think i moved in on like the 14th september and started on the 16th um on a monday when I've been drinking a weekend and still drinking that week. I would just look into your university's timetable thing because I know a lot of them that didn't have seminars during their freshers week. It was painful, I'm not gonna lie. Okay, and then second to last question is, what's moving into university like? Obviously, I'm not gonna lie, it is quite daunting. You know, you're moving out for the first time, but you have to remember, everybody else there feels the same. And once you're there, you've had a few drinks with everyone, you've got to know everyone a little bit, it honestly feels like you've known them forever and it all becomes a lot less scary. Honestly, in that first week, you don't even realize that you've left home, partly because I think it kind of felt like a holiday. And then after a bit, it does hit you and you do feel a bit homesick, obviously. But as long as you keep yourself a bit busy and keep social with everybody, it's really not too bad because as I said, everybody is feeling the same. Okay, and then the last question is specifically for Manchester Met students. And that is, what is the best Manchester Met accommodation? I only knew people in the Burley Town houses and flats and in Cambridge and Cavendish. Let me just read my notes to you guys so I don't forget what to say. Um, So the most social is definitely Cambridge, but you're not gonna get as luxury of an experience and you're sharing bathrooms with a few more people. And by the way, I was in a Burley Town house. And then the Burley Town houses, I really like to be honest. It's really spacious and still sociable but not as sociable as Cambridge and Cavendish they're like the same by the way you also share with only one other person I don't know I just felt really comfortable in my halls in the townhouses and then the Burley flats are really nice but they are the most expensive you're basically paying to get your ensuite which I can tell you now I personally didn't find worth it well obviously I didn't have an ensuite but I'm saying it's sharing with one person it was literally fine as long as you both keep it clean you have no problems but I, I don't know if it was very sociable in the flats I wouldn't say it would be I can't imagine it being that sociable because you're all on different floors to everyone so how would you really like meet other people whereas in the townhouses you have the courtyard in the middle and you just meet them through that and like the group chats basically if you have MMU specific questions pop me a DM on Instagram and that is all the questions I have from you guys thank you so much for those of you who did send them in I hope I've helped a bit if I haven't as I said drop me a DM and I'll kind of like expand what I was trying to say basically thank you so much for watching make sure to subscribe if i've helped you at all and also let me know if there's any other university videos or videos in general that you'd like me to do if you want me to do a budgeting one let me know and i'll definitely do that i do hope that i've helped a little bit with you guys moving into university in september whether it's this year or next year thank you so much for watching and i'll see you guys next time with another video